Hi everybody, it's Sunday, May 9th, 2021, and I've been working for three days now on Tyler Burr's bus, getting the alarm signal wiring snafus repaired. This particular vehicle, the wiring is in good condition. I have only found one problem with insulation and what I've done is just taped it and then you all know how many times you have seen electrical tape unwind itself. There is no way to stop that except using a zip tie. So whenever I wind tape around a wire, I use a zip tie to hold it. I use a test lamp like this. This you'll notice I have it clipped to a ground and the other end of it I can use to test circuits. I can't demonstrate the bulb lighting right now because I do not have the batteries connected. Uh, the wiring to the terminal board, which is on the instrument or the dashboard of a Greyhound Silver Sides, or I should say a GM Silver Sides, the wiring appears to be in good condition, and it is not my intention to recommend disturbing wiring on your bus when it looks this good. People are advised to rip out the wiring, tear that all out, you don't need it. Well, you're wrong. Okay, through the life of the bus, things like this show up. You can see this is one of the original wires, but I have absolutely no idea right now and don't intend to find out what that wire was. This is a common problem with the telltale lights, the little Bakelite pieces break free from the metal clips. This is a very common problem and it's very easy to fix. So while that's apart, wiggle out the lamp holder, which is set in these barrels or sleeves by friction. Wiggle that out, get the bulb out, and these can be repaired first by making sure that the spring load is working. What happens over the years is these little spring loads like this one are stuck. There, I just freed it up. Let's see if you can see that. I'm not sure if you can see that wire moving or not. Anyway, take my word for it. These springs compress. Now what gets these out of the sockets more often than not is when you're pushing in, when you're pushing in on the light to unscrew it, to free it up, when you push it in, because these little sleeves, see that sleeve, see that little flange? That's a sleeve that's inside this and they seize up from age and lack of movement. So when you go to push the bulb in to unscrew it, to release it, you push these out through the back. It's normal, it happens, and you can fix it. If you just take your time and think about the ability you have to do something, you can save $131,000 a year on the maintenance of your bus. If you just sit at the kitchen table and think about, well, I never did that before. I don't know if I can do that or not. Well, just damn it, just do it. Don't think about it, just do it. If you find yourself mechanically feeble, 
Well, it's a good time in your life to redevelop your personality. Okay, now getting back over. Oh, by the way, uh, this bus, like all buses, has a tachometer. Well, we couldn't repair a flat tire because we were broke, but we damn sure had the money to buy a tachometer. Okay, enough of that. I've probably killed that one. Getting over to the instrument panel, you can see I have put it out to where I can work on it. And again, the wiring looks really good. I'm not going to disturb. You do have to handle it carefully. It's rubber wire covering with cotton covering over the wire covering the wire. This is the cluster of resistors and lights, the uh, alarm lights. As I have repaired these circuits, I am marking these lights so I know where they go back into the panel when I'm ready to do that. Again, these, this, this area of the light slides into this sleeve and it illuminates a panel on this side. I'm going to try to avoid this blue steering wheel. I have to take a nausea pill before I can come here and work on this bus. So, what I've done, going back to the diagram, is located where the areas I need to trace the wire. So here we go. For instance, here's the oil pressure unit. That means this is the sending unit to the oil pressure gauge. So when I found out that the oil pressure gauge wasn't working, I start here with a battery that will cause this gauge to operate. That now tells me this gauge is okay. The same with this. These are the two meters that are on your instrument panel. And these are the sending units from the engine compartment. When you look on the diagram, it shows the terminal points on the wiring panel. This is the fuse panel, and here's the wiring pan. So if you see point six on that schematic, you come over here to point six, and if you can apply a light voltage here, and if this wiring is intact, by the way, I'm gonna stop right now and tell you about these terminals. Underneath the nuts, on these terminals, a patina occurs on these copper lugs that will insulate this bolt and nut from the others on the same stud or bolt. Don't assume just because this looks clean and pretty that voltage is passing through it. You see this corrosion here? See this? This is a telltale sign that this circuit may be incomplete due to corrosion or patina between these two points. So what I will do or get somebody to do. This is a long, arduous task, people. This can get boring fast. 
is to carefully remove each one of these and clean the nut, clean both sides of the wire, uh, the wire, what do you call it, uh, connector, and the nut below it and the nut below that, okay? I use these nut drivers. Some of these are a three-eighths. Some of these are an eleven thirty seconds, and some of them are five sixteenths. So, I suspect that's a terminal that either right now or will soon cause a problem. So, I will take that apart. Next thing I do is look for points that are supposed to be energized that are not. And with that, as you see, I have the circuit grounded. And be sure and wiggle these wires good. Wiggle these alligator clips good. So you scrape, and I'm going to use the word patina again. So you scrape the patina off of the metal to make a good positive contact. If you don't, you're going down a false road. You're on a track into a cornfield. So then start by a reference point. On the main terminal board, here's the main battery connection. This is the power coming from the battery. And this is located on the switch panel portion of the, of the instrument panel. And you begin by making sure that you have a voltage here. At this point, the light should illuminate. Again, I don't have the batteries connected. So, that's the process for going through this wiring. Look at every single terminal with a bright light and watch for corrosion. See here? Here's a little telltale sign again. I can find it now. Let me get the pencil in the picture. See that? I would suspect this. And I'll take that one apart. Or I'll get somebody else to do it. If you have a son or a daughter who's interested in this kind of stuff, or... If they want something from you, it's your opportunity to get them to give you something first. Uh, I raised my kids to negotiate. Oh, you want money to go to a dance? You want money to go skating? Good. I have a job for you. And that's how you get your kids. Another way you can get your kids to submit to your desires is to chain them to the bed for three days. After three days with no food or drink, they're willing to do anything for you. Okay, that's enough of that. Inside here we see various relays and buzzers and alarms and all, and all that stuff needs to be checked too. These wires need to be inspected carefully. Everything could be perfect except Nothing works, and so there's good reason why. One of the nice things about bus conversions, according to the book, the, there's an air pressure relay above the driver and a panel, which as you can see, uh, the guy who made up this bus covered that panel. You will see two bulbs illuminated now. One of them is the low oil warning light.
And the other one is the hot engine warning light. And the reason the hot engine warning light is lit is because I have jumpered to ground the hot engine sending unit. Here is the low oil sending unit, which is already in its normal state. The engine is not running, there's no oil pressure. The switch inside here is closed, grounding this circuit, causing the low oil pressure light to light up. If I remove this clip, so will the light go out. If I go back to the diagram, I see that. Here, here is the unit back in the engine compartment. This is the unit that's mounted on the water manifold next to the temperature sending unit. When this unit is grounded, it sends a signal to the hot engine telltale. If I want to check to see where the circuit failure occurs, I ground at terminal number six. Water overheat thermostat, number six. Now, close your eyes while I spin the camera around. And here's terminal number six. So if I ground it at this point, that light should come on. If that does not illuminate, there is a possibility that these connections are corroded or there is a defect in the source of power. The source of power to this light is coming from the negative hot. Remember, the silver side has positive ground. So the source of power for that light comes from the hot side of the bus electrical system, the positive ground. The circuit is completed by the low oil pressure switch, which is that unit I showed you back in the engine compartment. When that low oil pressure switch indicates the absence of oil pressure, that switch closes, grounds that circuit, and completes it through the light and the resistor. Okay. I'm not going to explain these resistors now. Uh, the newer buses, after this, had diodes that separated the voltages from each of the warning lights. So now I'll demonstrate a condition of hot engine. I have disconnected that ground wire from the unit back in the engine. And remember, that wire coming from the engine goes to terminal number six. By the way, this is wiring that people stick on after. This kind of stuff here is what I always find. I always find stuff. Uh, I had that air conditioning switch kept, is broken and it kept turning on. So what I did was I just disconnected the wire and taped it and then put a zip tie to hold the tape from unwinding. So I will go ahead now and demonstrate the condition of a hot engine. When the engine reaches 200 degrees, which is a preset, it will ground that circuit. And that's what I'm doing now with this test lead. I'm grounding that circuit. And you see what's happening? When I ground that circuit, 
the hot engine light comes on just as it would if the engine was overheated. There is a buzzer attached to the panel and the buzzers are usually defective and I'll fix that later. But I wanted to show you when the hot, if a hot engine condition occurs, that light and that buzzer will illuminate. This light again is lit because it is the low oil pressure and because the engine isn't running, of course the oil pressure is low. The other lights are the emergency door and do not ignore that circuit. Don't say, well, we don't use it, we don't need it. No, make sure that circuit works because when you're driving down the road, and by the way, you guys do not disable your emergency door. You may need it. So there's a door light, there's a light for low air pressure, and then there are two other lights. One is the high beam indicator and the other is a fog light indicator. So it's important that all these features work, not only the alarm signals, but also the high beam and low beam. I think that's about enough for this session. So uh, I'm going to get back to work here and I hope you enjoyed this and you hear this banter all the time, but I want to say it. Uh, I'm a little disappointed that I have no new subscriptions. Uh, maybe all of this stuff is getting a little boring. Maybe there are too many of us on YouTube already preaching this stuff. I don't know. But I do also miss your comments. I hear people tell me all the time, well, I watch your videos, but they don't leave comments. So leave comments, ask questions, and uh, once again, the wiring in this bus is in good condition, and I have no intention of changing it. All these little repairs are just simple stuff you don't need a technician to fix. Okay, one other little item. Once again, this came up, and once again, I'll talk about it. It's important that when you're looking at a bus to buy, you need to know that your mind isn't set on how you're going to configure it, how you're going to customize it, how you're going to do this, that, or the other thing. Your mind is going to be on getting the bus running and driving, like Taylor is here. He bought this bus and threw it at me to fix. And that's fine. I'll do it. It's important you spend your money creating a reliable vehicle, not creating a pretty vehicle. Buy windshield wiper blades instead of tachometers. Buy tires instead of air horns. Fix the tires you have instead of buying aluminum ones. Steel wheels, when painted in the colors that go along with whatever color scheme you choose for your bus, look mighty nice, in my opinion. Okay, as you can see, Taylor has something to start with, you know. Uh, he might not like this configuration, but... It's something to start with. Taylor and I will get this bus running and driving, and he has seats, and he can go for a ride and enjoy the bus running and driving. Later, as his work accomplishments improve and his wife lets him have more of his paycheck, he will spend it on interior work. Meanwhile, he hasn't spent $1,000 on aluminum wheels and lug nuts and fancy chrome covers sitting on the highway, broke down because his radiator sprung a leak. You can see where we are. Here's the 1942 Mac. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Please leave comments. I, you hear that all the time. And bus old man Phil, feeling good. 
Spring in Minnesota. Jawtooth presents some wonderful train shows here on YouTube. And Jawtooth has infected me with something he has been saying lately. Wait, there's more. To help, help you understand your bus, uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea if you got hold of a maintenance manual. They are available. They do show up on eBay from time to time. Otherwise, you can find somebody that can send you a copy. Uh, we'll begin with the electrical section. And what you see here is a guide to all the functions of your vehicle. And before you start any project, read this. It's not necessary that you remember every item you see on this page. What is necessary for you to know is that you know how to find information. When you're tracing wires, when voltages don't appear where they should, this is how you learn to navigate around your bus. Again, don't try to memorize all this stuff. Just know that the information you want is in the book. Here's, here's the panel that I just showed you. This is the front dashboard panel on your silver side, on your right as you step aboard the bus. Here is the purpose of every terminal. Shows you the body. Here's a symbol for the junction panel at the rear of the bus. The triangle is a junction panel at the front of the bus. You can study this stuff and learn. Here's the panel that I just showed you in the front of the bus. Here are things about horns and lights, low air pressure indicator. Everything you need to know is in the, box, in the book. And if it isn't, you can find it. It helps me a lot if I use my camera and create a blow-up version of a circuit that's hard to trace. It helps to have a box of stuff like this around. Wire ties of different sizes. Heat shrink spaghetti comes in very handy to repair wiring. I like these meters that I used to buy at Radio Shack. You can buy them at Menards or any hardware store now. I do not like digital meters. I don't like all that jumping and plopping around uh, with all those digits fluttering in my eyes. It gives me a headache. I like a good mechanical meter with the ranges I need for your bus, uh, a 25 volt range for resistance measurements. The lower ranges are fine. We don't need these high ranges. That's for electronic work. We don't need the AC. So this function, the DC voltage and resistance are the two main functions. Okay, that's it for now. I'm going to hook up the batteries and then I'll give you a little demo of these lights. Well, I did already give you a demo of the lights, so that's it. I hope you have a nice summer. Uh, I'll throw some stuff back on from time to time. And so, that's old man saying, God bless you all, and enjoy your life, and enjoy your bosses. Uh, it's, it's great being here with you. I love it. Bye-bye.